We went as a family to Alaska, and we saw some pretty amazing landscapes up there. One thing that was interesting is there's a traditional knife, the ulu, that's been used for several thousand years. They started as stone. In the 19th century, they started making them out of steel. It's a little short blade with a handle in the middle. And of course, we found the touristy factory that makes a version of them now. And it was kind of nice in that you could see them being made there. This is the handle being cut out and then the handle being sanded. I'm not sure how traditional it is, but they had a cutting board that went with the knife. And I thought it would be interesting to try and make one of those cutting boards. So I got one of the knives. I scored a factory second. <laughs> I think there's a knot in the handle. But what's nice about this one is it doesn't have the touristy graphics all over the handle. It's just a simple wooden shape. I thought it would be interesting to do a randomized pattern to try and make some texture for the cutting board, as there were so many interesting textures up in Alaska. The glaciers and the mountains and the rocks and the way the snow sits on the mountains and the way the glaciers break up as they flow down the mountains. I found some different small pieces that I have that aren't really going to be big enough for a bigger project. So a piece of cherry and some of the oak that I cut up a few years ago. There's a few smaller pieces that are kind of twisted and would work well for cutting into small pieces. I cut those oak pieces shorter. They wouldn't have quite as much twist in them and I could joint and plane them and a piece of something darker. I'm not entirely sure what this is, but it was just a scrap piece in my wood pile, and it was a good length, so I decided I could use it. <laughs> and it'd be nice to have a little bit of something darker in the pattern. So I cut everything to the same width. All of the pieces are different thicknesses, but what I want now is the same width out of every piece so I can glue them together into a single block. In cutting the pieces to width, I would end up with uh, pieces at the end that were wide enough. So I glued some of those together to make some pieces that were wide enough, as the seam down the middle won't really matter and will actually help randomize the pattern. Once those are glued, I can joint and plane them and cut them to that same width again. These are all the pieces I've cut. I can put them together and then randomize them a little bit to start making the pattern. I could see this in some of the striping in the glaciers we saw. I rotated all the pieces and I can put glue in all the seams. I made two sections at this point. The full glue up is gonna be much too wide for my joiner. So once I scrape the glue off, I can joint one face, then plane the other face. It's really nice having this new cutter head. <laughs> it's a really good surface. And I don't get any variation in the thickness at the end. Then I can glue those two parts together. And in joining those seams, I then flipped the pieces around so the, the top and bottom match up. Even if the joiner's off by a tiny amount, as in not perfectly square, it'll still give me a, a flat final piece. So the glacier is a little bit more broken up. I can cut the end off, as this is too big to go on my sled then I can start to cut this piece into strips. This is the one time I'm cutting these where the cut accuracy doesn't matter too much. These cuts will be on the top and bottom as I will make an end grain cutting board. Put all these together and I flipped every other one around and I rotated them all 90 degrees. 
and this starts to give me a pattern, though it's somewhat regular, which actually looks more like the glaciers that we saw, where you get the striping pattern that's broken up with the cracking of the glacier. Now it's thin enough to just fit on my sled, and this gives me a, a slightly better cut, and I think it's slightly safer too. <laughs> I'm trying to hold it tight to the push part of the sled with the screwdriver, but I couldn't really push it while holding the screwdriver. Once it got too short, I couldn't really do it safely on the sled, so I went back to using the fence on the table saw. These can go together, and I randomized these, and I found I offset them slightly, and this gave me more of a broken pattern. glue all of these together. <laughs> As the side is sort of sideways side grain, I can very carefully joint that face or that edge. I wouldn't do this if I didn't have the length and the weight of the piece. Then I can cut this piece into strips. Now this direction on the glue up still doesn't fit in my sled. As it gets smaller and smaller, it will fit in the sled. And I can glue all these up. So it was a process of gluing, clamping, cutting, gluing, clamping, cutting over and over and over again, getting to a more and more randomized pattern with more and more interest and more and more variety in the pieces. I think it got further away from the kinds of textures we saw on the glaciers but I still really like the pattern in the end. It feels almost like sort of a natural, randomized kind of a surface. I used the Oliver table saw, and that did seem to give a slightly better cut as the blade is thicker. Because the blade's thicker, it removes more of the wood each time I make a cut. So it was sort of a toss-up to use the Powermatic or the Oliver. Glued all those together. Each time the glue was set up, I had to clean off all the glue bits, as I didn't want the surface to get more and more and more uneven as I was cutting and re-gluing this. So now the texture is getting very broken up. It's becoming an even randomized texture as the pattern becomes finer and finer. So I think at this point, I'm done with making the pattern. So the next step is to cut the hole in the middle, and I need to glue some tabs to the edge so I can hold this on the CNC machine. So I glued two tabs on two sides, then I flipped the piece over, and I glued tabs on the other sides. And this will allow me to flip the piece over on the CNC machine. Now to make the hole, I wanted it to at least reference the knife. So I wanted to figure out what the radius on the curve of the knife was. I measured the length, and I know this dimension has a name, but it, it, it's sort of the, the thickness of the cord of the circle. And with those two dimensions, I can draw an arc that I can get that radius from. So I have the length and then the thickness. And I can make a rectangle from that and make an arc that fits in that rectangle, then I can find the radius on that arc. And it was about five and a quarter inches. But in thinking about it, <laughs> when you're using the cutting board, you probably want to rock the knife back and forth. The radius of the cutout and the cutting board should be bigger than the radius of the knife. So I ended up making the radius of the cutting board cut out seven inches. With that radius number, I could make the cutting board and make a sphere with that radius and then subtract that sphere from the cutting board. And that gave me a model of the hole that I needed to cut out of the cutting board. But I could bring that model into a spire as I didn't really know how to model this in a spire. <laughs> Although it is very simple. Once I had it in a spire, I could set up all of the CNC pads pretty easily. 
I did a roughing pass with a half inch ball nose bit and a finishing pass with a quarter inch ball nose bit. It ended up not cutting it like this for the roughing pass. I'm not sure how I got it to do it like this on the simulation. I thought about doing this on the lathe, which I certainly could have done, but I thought it would be nice to get that radius perfect on the CNC machine. I flattened the bottom and this is where I can now flip the piece over and work on the top with a nice flat bottom. And I can flatten the top. So I'm using a half inch end mill to do the flattening. I didn't want to chip the surface using a, a bigger cutting bit, which, which may have worked just fine or it might not have. As I'd put so much work into this piece that I was now carving up, I didn't want to damage it. And this seemed to work pretty well with the half inch mill. Then I can start the roughing pass. I did a bunch of tests with the z-axis up higher to make sure it was going to do what I thought it was going to do. As I said, I really didn't want to damage this piece. <laughs> it ended up doing the roughing pass a little differently where it took a bunch of linear passes through the whole piece which gave a better final outcome, but I think it took a little longer as it went over a lot of the places it had already cut. And it really didn't take that long. It's like 10 minutes. <laughs> then I put the quarter inch ball nose bit in and I can do a finishing pass. And that's just one pass over the whole thing. This was similar. I think it took about 10 minutes. and the knife seems to work. It was surprisingly easy. I didn't really have any problems. Then I wanted to cut off the excess. This is bigger than I planned it to be. And before I did that, I sanded out the hole. I'm gonna save these pieces I'm cutting off. Maybe I'll find something else to make with them as the pattern's pretty cool. And I can glue those scrap pieces back together and the pattern, pattern should be continuous. Then I can sand the flat part of the cutting board with the disc sander. And I wanted to add handles on two sides. And I lowered the bit and took a few passes to cut these as it was taking off quite a bit at a time. And the piece isn't real big so it was a little bit of a challenge holding it. Then I put finish on, I'm just doing walnut oil, and it looks really nice. This surprised me how nice it turned out. Not sure the pattern really follows anything we saw in Alaska. I can make up some theory about seeing rocks or patterns in the mountains or whatever, but <laughs> I think it's just a cool random pattern. Then I thought it would be a good idea to make chocolate chip cookies. So I cut up some pecans with the knife in the cutting board and it seemed to work well. Normally when I do this with a straight knife on a regular cutting board, the, the nuts tend to go all over the place. So this is really nice that it's a little bit like a mortar and pestle and that the thing that you're chopping up doesn't run off. Thanks for watching.